Good day to you all. It's great to have you in our session today. And I'm really excited to present this session to, um, to our attendees, predominantly from um, Ghana, Zambia and Zimbabwe. All right. And uh, in today's session, I'm going to focus both gateway and SES exams, uh, the tips related to these exams. Um, I know it is very, very short time you guys have got um, to the exam, but it's not late, right? So it's good to understand um, the exam techniques, etc. Now, let me start off by introducing myself, right? My name is Andrew D. Alves. I've got over 20 years of uh, experience working in different companies across the world. Currently, I'm the managing director of Ultimate Access, the company that's bringing this webinar to you. I'm the principal lecturer and I also speak at many events, right? And I hope to see you at one of these events or when I come over to your countries and I'm due to visit some of the countries as well. So it'll be great to meet you in person. Now, today's agenda, I'm going to talk about what you should do before the exam. And you might find it pretty strange. This is nothing to do with how to study, right? I assure you that. And the day of the exam, at the exam, the writing technique, right? We are looking at some of the MCS or gateway questions and answers. We will look at SES as well. I'm going to look at both Crown Care and Vita. And then we'll wrap it up with uh, a message from our past finalists. Okay. And in the meantime, if you do want to ask questions, we've got the chat box open for you and you can ask me any questions. I'm happy to answer as we go along. Now, before the exam, what should you be doing? This is quite important for a number of reasons. I request our students to visit the exam center, okay? and ensure you're registered to do the exam on that particular day. Now, there have been many a time where students rock up to this exam center and suddenly discover their name is not there. Okay, so we don't want that kind of surprises uh, on the day of the exam. The exam itself is uh, enough of excitement to have in our life. For that particular day, we don't want additional stress. So in order to reduce your stress levels, what we tell is visit the exam center, ensure that you're registered. Another key thing for you to do is to check the keyboards, right? Now, this happened to one of our students in, in Cambodia. He visited the exam center and then found the keyboard was not really good. Then he asked the exam uh, center, the people there, is it possible to bring his own keyboard? And they said, well, it is possible, but you need to bring this before the exam. We will need to examine it. We need to check it, and which he did. And they allowed Okay, so your keyboard is very, very important. There have been times where the, uh, the, the candidate has mentioned the keyboard was not good, the, 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 the keys were sticky, etc. So you need to uh, be very careful because the success of your exam depends on how fast you're going to type at the exam. Okay, now Another thing that you need to remember is there will be others sitting at the same exam venue. Um, you can ask for noise cancellation headset. Find out whether they give it. I know in the UAE that uh, where I'm based in, they do give noise cancellation headsets. All right. So find that out. And um, another important aspect is the calculator policy right uh, 
they will allow you to bring in a basic calculator not a scientific one nor your phone okay so but also remember uh, at the exam there is a calculator available the virtual calculator having said all that well the examiner does not expect you to do any sums any calculations right there is no direct question asking you to calculate certain things therefore um, you see this is this is not a huge issue because anyway a calculator is there a virtual calculator is there as well as you you're able to take your own calculator basic one but clear it with them now the day of the exam go to the center at least 45 min minutes before the start time be relaxed right uh, they will not allow you to take any papers, pencils, pens to the exam, right? Water and food is not allowed. However, if there is some medication that you need to take, right? You may again want to clear this with the exam center prior to the day of the exam. Get a doctor's certificate and state this is the reason why you have to take the medication, okay? I know that the bathroom breaks are not allowed. Again, clear this if you are having some issue. It is best to sort these things out, right? Now, this last point, issue with the system. If the system shuts down, this has happened to a number of students. What do you do at that point? It's pointless getting very excited. I know it's it's easy to say, difficult not to do it. Um, well, you see, inform your invigilator. You need to get an official incident ticket number. With that number, you need to inform both Pearson View and the SEMA office people in writing. Okay, it is critical you do this. Because and sometimes even I, I mentioned about uh, the keyboard not working properly. Sometimes some exam centers may say, well, I will not allow you to bring a keyboard. This is what we've got. You have to use it. If there is some issue with the keyboard, whatever that you experience at the exam center, um, at there and then there's nothing that you can do. OK, all what you can do is to then um, come back and write to Pearson View SEMA office as well saying well there was an issue with the keyboard etc okay because these are key points that you need to um, understand uh, and how do you report an issue because all of these have happened to students students that we know personally so this is not hearsay this is not any rumors this has really happened to students all right any questions so far any questions from me from any of you guys okay so i've got the chat box open and i will see it i will look at it from time to time to see what you guys are saying and I can also see the chat coming through even if I've not opened the chat box okay so uh, you can ask me any questions as we go along right now let's see at the exam what you should be doing okay um, so there is, as you can see, there might be candidates doing it for the first time, doing this exam for the first time, right? So I want to draw your attention to few areas and also give you examples, certain things that have happened, right? Um, so you can see at any point in the exam, you can see how much time you have remaining, right? So time remaining. You can see this, right? You also see your progress through the exam below the, the time remaining and that you're on the second of the 12 screens in the tutorial, right? You can see that. 
You can see the virtual calculator here and you can see a scratch pad as well. Now I want to talk a little bit about your navigation. Okay. The previous and the next buttons on the bottom of the screen will enable you to move forward and backwards in the exam. You can move between sections, right? And the previous button may always not be available. Now, I will tell you something that happened to one of our students. Um, what happened was he had this, uh, he went, he, he was in the first, um, he was doing SES paper. So SES has three questions, right? So he looked at question one and he moved to the next section thinking I want to have a look at the next question as you know this is not possible okay if you go to the next question you can't come back right so be very very careful so stay in one question finish it and for SES, it will be 60 minutes and after the 60 minutes, it will push you to the next question. Okay, so please don't try to move physically into the other sections. Okay, so that's why we say please do not move to the next page. It's not like a, a manual exam that you're doing, you're writing a, a paper, then if you are you know doing it manually you're able to see all the questions that are there isn't it but in this case you cannot so you first attempt your first question once the time is up it will move you to the next question and you attempt the next question right because if you go forward you cannot come back all right and so time and progress right so it will show you as i said how your time is how you're progressing right and there will also be certain material available in your exam right so let me show you what material will be available in the next screen but in this screen i want to show you your exam response question box right this is where you will write your answers now you can see there is a cut copy paste undo redo buttons i had a student of mine who mentioned to me uh, she was in ghana actually she said she failed her exam scs exam with 77 marks because in one particular question she did a cut paste and it didn't go right she tried to undo redo in the excitement all these things um, don't work properly okay and her advice and the advice that i give to anybody is try to avoid these cut paste activities all right so try and type whatever that you want and uh, be careful when you're trying to delete as well avoid the cut, cut paste copy functionalities because you especially when there's just five minutes to go to complete the uh, particular section or two minutes you might get excited and do something which is quite bizarre okay now i want to talk about the scratch pad the scratch pad which is here and also this is where you will be able to write notes okay and there is a scratch pad available uh, physically as well like a plastic sheet that's available and we tell our students to write their answer plans i'll come to what answer plans are in this box 
rather than you write it in the scratch pad and I'll give you the logic behind it as well. Now I had two people one from Ghana one from Nigeria who mentioned uh, when they did the exam the first time they mistakenly wrote the answers in the scratch pad this scratch pad and of course you know it does not get marked it gets erased when you submit and they got zero marks at the exam okay so be very very careful all right very careful so this is how the scratch pad looks like okay so it also has a cut copy paste functions but you see it is distinctly different from it it will say this is the response box that you need to write your answers okay so be very very careful with this now i want to ask you guys a question here do you know what answer plans are do you practice your answers with answer plans let me ask that question so you can write in the chat box whether you do or whether you do not so can you tell me whether you write your answers prior to starting the answer do you do answer plans Kobe, Larry, Andrew, Cowan, Cowan and your team because I know there are a couple few people who are there do you do right Kobe says sometimes what about the others Larry, Nigel right okay right I okay guys this is uh Kevin says yes um right I think majority of you don't okay so I will give you the logic of this answer plan sometimes people say well not sometimes most uh, you know the people what they think is well it's a waste of time okay it's a waste of time because the um, the examiners they say spend one third of your time writing answer plans write the answer plan now what does this answer plan contain right what you will do is first I'm going to say I we will we will do an answer plan as well right so first what you will do is identify the tasks in the questions right so put task one is this task two is this or if there's a third task this is the third third task right under each of these tasks you need to write five to six points right which you will elaborate when you start writing the full-fledged answer now your examiner gives you marks for the number of points that you write okay so depending and you you shouldn't be writing huge amounts in one task and you know writing very little in the next task right so you can keep so the wonderful thing about this word processing document that we have the word processing uh, application that we have is you can keep space right for task one and then start with task two yeah so what we tell our students is please do your answer plan in your word processing document itself and not in the scratch pad that's available virtually nor in the scratch pad that is there 
um, that is there physically okay so that is answer plan is key the reason is when you're thinking about certain things right this task is given you need to write you know you need to write four to five points you have to jot them down and you can then look at well are there any uh, theories that i can bring into this the theories are only will only help you structure the answer you're not supposed to write about the theory the definitions etc okay so be careful um, it will help you structure the answer we mentioned about the cut copy paste and i will talk to you about how to write the answer plan and then structuring your answer so as mentioned i will be putting up a question right for you guys to attempt after the webinar and i really want to have a look at your answers and this time what i will do is i will read your answers and give you feedback as well okay i was not going to do this i was just going to give you the question and the answer but i will give you um the opportunity to write an answer so i can read it and give you feedback okay because exam writing technique is all about this answer plans there's no none of our students who pass the exam without writing an answer plan because it will help you to structure the answer and be on time as well okay now the next part is marketing your answer remember your examiner is a human being okay so they like nice things we all like nice things i also mentioned that the examiner gives you points for each point that you write so you can have short paragraphs right to um emphasize this is a separate point right and you can make the text bold or underline the certain part of it to show this is a one important point you're talking about right this way the examiner is it's easier for the examiner to give you marks now if you write one big paragraph with five points in it it's difficult for the examiner to extract these points right maybe the examiner might see only three points okay so it is important that you market uh the answer right so that's why we tell the students please separate your points yeah now i have seen many students that uh jump straight into the answer okay um you're getting an email you have to uh when you go to that exam hall this means you're going into either crown care or vita office right that's where you're going and you need to assume the role that is given to you and uh, in crown care you're a finance manager in uh, vita you're a senior finance manager you're reporting to the board through your uh, finance director you are you know a very, quite a senior person in this company so if an email is coming to you from either company right and they're saying that well the company is faced with some dilemma some issue you also need to feel that right be human feel that and write appropriately for example i'm sad to hear about this situation that's happened in either crown care or vita of a company and my response or my recommendations are as follows and then you uh, provide your answer to the tasks at hand right don't draw jump straight into the answer because it is also 
they are testing your people's skills okay now we've got additional material always the pre-scene is available to you and there will be reference materials okay so pre-scene now i must ask you how many times have you read this pre-scene how many times have you read the pre-scene andrew what about you how many times have you guys have read this pre-scene I just want to get an idea. Kobe, not enough. If you tell me on average you've read on it twice, no way. Okay, I'm telling you now, it's not enough. You need to read it thoroughly. Because at the exam, this is not a time for you to go and click this and start reading areas okay so seven times eight times you should have read it okay you need to read it Nigel that's very good you need to read it you said you read it five times go through it the areas that you need to look at it look at is what is the unseen in this pre-scene right it might sound a bit strange for example if I look at Vita now the people who have read the pre-scene about six times you would be able to rattle off to me well these are the risks that are there but if I ask you the question well what are the risks do you think that might be there with Vita then you have to think a little bit isn't it right what sort of risks can Vita face right because do you think that the risk register that they've given is all exhaustive I don't think so I don't think they have done a very good job with it to be honest right um, so well Larry is saying I have read it five times but I'm failing to figure out what may come in the unseen how should I approach it right Okay, I'll come to that, Larry. I'll have, I'll have a chat about this as well, right? Now, the key thing here is you need to read your pre-scene actively. Each page, you need to read, make notes. Anyone can see thousands have been given this pre-scene. Everyone is reading the same thing. But what you need to decipher from here is the unseen that is there, okay? which is an art which is an art and that's what larry is asking as well now i will go directly into this into your question larry and nigel has the same problem so how i would approach and larry uh, which exam are you doing is it the mcs or scs nigel what are you guys doing so i can tell you a little bit mcs okay right so Nigel is doing MCS, Larry is doing SCS, fine, right. So I'm just jumping the gun here. I have something written about this, but I'm going to talk about this right now because you guys are having certain issues. Now the MCS, the anchoring subject is P2, okay? And for SCS, the anchoring subject is E3, right? So you need to look at, it's not to say that everything else is forgotten, right? The, P, P, uh, P, the P2 is the anchoring subject. It's not to say that E2 and F2 are forgotten, but there is more emphasis on P2, okay? Right, now I will come to this, how you're going to uh, look at your precinct. Pre-scene is just a scenario that is given and it is setting the scene, right? However, what you need to do is to look at your, your um, syllabus, P2 syllabus and 
relate your pre-scene to every area of your P2. Have you guys done that? Right? The same goes to SCS. You need to look at your VITA case study and say, right, let me look at VITA. Let me take the, take the syllabus of E3 and then see how I will go through this whole thing. For example, I will talk about VITA and say, what sort of strategic planning do you think these guys are doing? Right? What sort of strategic, what kind of model do you think? Do you think it is a traditional model, a rational model? If yes, you guys need to now talk to me. Kobe, Kevin, you need to talk to me. What do you think? What sort of a strategic uh, planning model that they would be doing? What do you think? Right. So a rational model, a traditional model. Okay. Why do you say that? Why do you say that, Kevin and Larry? Why do you say that they do this kind of a mo this kind of a planning model? Why do you say? Any logic behind this? Any logic behind this? It follows a particular order, correct? But what business are we in? Uh, the founders, how old do you think they are? They have not given the age, but you can guess. How old do you think they are? And uh, our business, what sort of a business are we in? Middle age, you think so? Late 20s, yes. Or early 30s, late 20s, you're right, Richard, you're right. Um, yes, Kobe, good. They're in tech, right? They're in tech. So, and when did they start the company? When did they go public? Right, so 2011, they started uh, the company just after uni. And um, so they went into, you know, public 2017, quite aggressive. Am I correct? Am I correct? Quite an aggressive um, move. And what do you think the culture of the company is? Is it like a bank, traditional, all wearing, you know, very, uh, very innovative company? Yes, yes, true. Free thinking? Yes, I agree with you, Kobe. Very good. Correct. This is a very exciting young company, isn't it? Right? Free thinking. It's what you guys are telling me. And I'm going to now, the answers you gave me previous, you mentioned we are going into rational, traditional model of doing a strategic plan. Kevin, you got it. Very good. So now you guys are thinking very, very actively, isn't it? You're very much with the case study. You can see how different it is right we have we have to think about this case study in as a live thing we can't think about it as a very dry case right a dry thing uh, this is an exam we have to live and breathe it right now you know the kind of thinking the kind of energy this company has right with that you can go through this E3, what sort of thing, what sort of strategic options that they will be going in for? Okay, so that's really, really important. Now you understand why the traditional approach will not work. And technology changes, not every year, within a few months, right? Within a few months, things are changing. 
Yeah. So we can't wait for years, one full year to do a traditional way of a rational thinking strategic plan. Does that make sense to you guys? Does that make sense? Right. Kevin says no. Right. Kevin says no. That's fine. That's fine. So you need to understand the type of business you're in. Now, when it comes to uh, even Crown Care or Vita, what sort of a business are we in? Right. In Vita's case, we are in a very dynamic business, which is changing rapidly. OK. And when it comes to something like that and you're looking at the E3 area, and I picked up the type of uh, strategic planning that you will be doing. Definitely, um, you cannot be looking into a traditional way of doing strategic plans. Your rational model will not work. So, Kevin, you mentioned the freewheeling strategy, right? That is exactly right. That can work, right? Freewheeling an emerging strategy. Those are things that will work in this case, right? So, Kevin, now do you understand? Right. So, um, then I have Walia. You also mentioned you do not understand. Does it mean that you don't understand? I don't know at what point you join and what uh, level that you're doing right it's important to apply your current case to your um to your syllabus right yeah so basically what if you're in scs do you understand now why i i selected a more um actively changing strategic plan rather than a very st traditional strategic plan right because our industry is such right the one that we are in uh, technology it changes rapidly okay okay i think you you guys have got now uh, the understanding how to read this case study okay so if i'm looking at um, reference material you will have these exhibits one two kind of reference material available to you and sometimes it will be um, now in, in the, even the pre-scene you can go into certain sections of the pre-scene as well okay something to remember we mentioned about the calculator I won't stay there long uh, this is the virtual calculator that is there the, uh, the scientific and the other one the tables and formulas are there for you as well. Um, and five minutes before your section is finishing, there will be a message that will pop up and say, well, it's time for you now, five minutes before, uh, before it's over, right? Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about integration, what it means, okay? Now, we have been given reference material at the exam and you also have been given pre-seen material do not ignore this and do not write your answer in isolation right and um, i have seen many students and even i myself did this at the exam right um, where I wrote the theory aspects of it, but not applying it to the case study. Okay. And if there is reference material given, you need to integrate this into your answer. Right. You need to integrate your pre-seen certain material into your answer. Right. You shouldn't just write something in isolation. Who does not understand this? Because this is a key point. People fail with 
two marks less to passing or three marks less to passing because of this. I myself failed several times because of this. Anyone who did not understand what I said, please say so that I can give you further examples. Right. So in let us say you're asked about in either either case study. Right. And um, OK, so let us say you have been asked to um, evaluate a funding model a fund they want to go in for a different type of funding and they say in either case right in either vita or in uh, crown care they're looking at uh, getting a loan right so we need to then talk about there are different ways of looking at the loan so the incorrect way of doing this is just talk about this particular loan. They say, okay, it's at this particular interest rate, etc., etc., right? And you critique it just around that, what is given. The good way or the best practices you will talk about, what about VITA or Crown Care's gearing structure, the current gearing structure? Have, will they have any covenants? Will it impact the shareholders? Right? How about our liquidity position currently? Will it impact it? Right? You bring in certain other factors into consideration and not writing uh, just in isolation. Did that make sense to you? Valia, yeah. So particularly one one person here said I did not understand. So I want to. Okay, great, great. Because please, uh, I failed the exam because again I wrote about theory, not even mention the word of the case study at all. The company I did not mention. All right. So please do not do that. Uh, do that. Do that mistake. Now I want to look at uh, the gateway question first. Right. Let's look at the examiner's comments. And these are same things that come up. Right. Um, many candidates struggle to relate the P pillar syllabus to the requirements in the scenario. So this is the reason why. I'm asking you guys who are doing MCS, take the pre scene, go to your P2 syllabus, check every part of your P2 syllabus and see, well, how can it link to crown care? Okay, how can it link to crown care? When I did my workshop in Ghana, for example, we did a very active session where we we did the three days I had I did P2, F2, E2, the whole syllabus I covered with scenarios and where uh, where they they participated the students participated and came up with different scenarios if they didn't understand a concept they learned that concept then and there so it is extremely important that you look at p2 and see how does it relate right then the examiner says, secondly, there was a further deterioration in knowledge of F pillar syllabus. The concerns expressed in previous reports appear to have been overlooked because many candidates shows very little understanding of the content of F2 advanced financial reporting in syllabus. Candidates continue to demonstrate an awareness of business and that of the practical management, which is clearly desirable. However, what you're lacking is the technical understanding, right? So in F2, there will be a lot of things related to um, consolidation, 
right you should be aware of that yeah because in our case you can see the way our crown care how they are uh, expanding is through mergers right they will be um offers you know share offerings and there, there's mergers so how will the reporting be okay how will the reporting be the issues that uh, that might come up with this F2 area you need to know quite well. Now let us look at our February 2018 variant 1 question 3. Okay now this is related to uh, a particular question previous exam question. Uh, I advise um, our students to attempt previous exam questions the reason is it gives you a good understanding how to structure your answer and also it will cover your syllabus okay just because you do your pre uh, your past papers does not mean that you have to read the pre scene of these past papers it is not necessary right so they're saying please draft a paper now I, I need to understand the tasks here isn't it the first thing is to understand the task please draft a paper on the technical and ethical issues that my suggestion would create for Norton's external financial reporting right um, your paper also needs to cover two related issues firstly what are the specific problems associated with determining whether investing in a project to create such a section would have a positive net percent value secondly what are the specific project management problems so now you can clearly identify the tasks that you're asked to do is it clear to you guys how to identify the tasks right this applies to both MCS and SES students who are here okay then we've got our reference material given to us right and you don't have to read that now I want to show you our answer plan right when I'm writing an answer plan I will spend you're given 45 minutes I will spend one third looking at what are the tasks okay technical ethical issues problems associated with uh, the NPV and project management problems right so you can see I'm putting down these particular um, points right I'm putting down these points and then what I will do is when it comes to starting my full answer I will start now knowledge of current stuff I will start writing about it uh, local knowledge I will start writing there right below this small paragraphs below each of these things right you don't have to have these numbers there right i just for presentation sake i wanted to show you is this very clear to you guys is it clear if i did not have an answer plan you can see what will happen to me right now I'm going back and forth back and forth I don't know how much I have written about this NPV thing have I written sufficient about the technical and ethical right so I will be all over the place very confused not writing coherently okay my answer is not structured well you see if, if I don't do this answer plan this is what's going to happen to me okay so let us go now to an SES question okay 
This was May 2018, variant 1, question 3. Okay, let us see. Larry is saying, I have always had problems with past papers because I thought going through pre was a waste of time, so I just have to go straight. Yes, correct, Larry. You really need not go through the pre -scene, right? Just look at the question and, you know, now still you have some time to do your, because you're doing SES, isn't it? So you, you have some time. So what you will do is look at the question, write the quick answer plan. You can refer to the answer of that particular uh, question, read it and even come back and write it in your own words, right? Do it like that. You will learn the context of what they're talking about. You will learn the syllabus as well, okay? Because if you don't know a certain area, now is not the time to go to the textbook you don't have time right we need to have shortcuts so here again what are they asking I need you to draft a briefing paper that I can take to the board on the following how should we address first banks reservation about our ability to repay the loan how should we approach authority concerning Couchweb's position in the market? How will economic variables in Lorovia affect the cost of borrowing? And how should we manage the currency risks associated with the borrowing? Very clear points. In this case, it's easy, right? They're very clearly stating these are the points I want you to talk about. So I've got another question from Nigel, but every time I refer to the SEMA answers, I have observed that the answers are so simple. Spot on, Nigel. Now, this is another thing our students get very confused about, right? So I must ask you the question. Now, are you addressing a group of finance professionals? Or are you addressing a group of non-finance professionals in your board? Who are you addressing? Nigel and Nana. Non-financial, correct. So this is not the time to dazzle them with your financial knowledge and the jargon. You have to explain things very simply, right? Imagine your own board, if you're going to explain certain things, they will only listen if, they, if you explain certain things very simply to them, right? If it's very complicated, you're not going, they're not going to listen to you, right? And the same thing applies in this case as well. I hope that made sense to you. All right? Say so for example, if I take you guys, imagine I'm an architect, right? And if I, uh, a historian rather, if I take you to Rome and I tell you all the historical facts and give you dates and numbers and figures and the names etc 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 about certain artifacts that are there would you remember you wouldn't isn't it you will take it from one year out from the other right but if i make it interesting for you make it very simplistic tell you a story about it you will remember that isn't it so these people who are who are there who you're you know who you're addressing are all non-financial professionals so you you need to make things very simple and this is they're testing your communication skills your people skills again okay right so this is the reference material given to you okay talks about the loan application so on and so forth 
and your answer plan is related to four areas okay so i'm going to address the bank concerns here you go to understand this we need to be able to know our financial positions this is not the time for us to go and look at the pricing we should know our figures right availability of collateral we don't know whether there is our our uh, you know is it available or not but we need to mention it okay uh, so these are the points that we need to talk about you can see there's quite a number of them here uh, position in the market how we are going to talk about that three key points there the cost of borrowing right uh, what are the key things that we will talk uh, when it comes to cost of borrowings and the management of the currency risks right so very clearly i have put the four tasks that's requested and under each task i have got a number of points that i'm going to talk about right now let's look at what your examiner said for scs in august overall performance disappointing why there was a lack of planning of answers so this is your answer plan candidates focused on specific word or phrase in the task requirement and wrote extensively about the relevant model without applying the model to the case right so you can see what has happened to the candidate because each task needs points if you didn't write these points you're not going to be very structured in your answer okay secondly many candidates offered unrealistic arguments that implied a lack of understanding of the business model so for example i'll give you a good good example here um, this is you can say um, in one of our um, cases one of our case studies we didn't have an it director okay so but if you go and tell the examiner well we should go in for big data right that is that is no way that can happen right because we need to talk about the importance of an it director and then maybe big data how can you invest in such a massive thing without a director in a position so this is your business skills that is getting tested and you might come up with different uh, options but always look at it and think well does it make good business sense if i'm if i own this business will i do this right always have that mind right whether whether you will take go ahead and do this business in general the examiner says candidates did not answer what was asked in some parts of the variance this is another classic thing i've seen it happening over and over again the students don't answer the question that is asked they answer some other question in their mind right be very careful very very careful because this is why i'm asking you guys do your past paper questions right put down the points and check with the answer very quickly are you on the right track yeah it's really important so what sort of problems the examiner has highlighted lack of planning the answer we have a solution the answer plan not applying the theory to the case now the theories are only good to structure your answer nothing more you're not going to talk about these theories okay lack of business skills 
you need to immerse in this case study in in the scenario you're facing don't think you're at the exam and then write the answer like a student okay when you read your past paper answers you would have noticed that it is very easy to read you yourself has men you have mentioned and it is very um you know it's very they integrate it quite well and you think you're reading uh, about this issue this answer uh, of somebody who is in that business from somebody who is in the business not not a student right not a student uh, did not answer what was asked for so this is where i'm asking you write down the tasks and then answer them okay all right so these are the key areas that you need to focus on let me um yeah now let us look at crown care for a second as i mentioned this is p2 is your anchoring subject you need to look at the opportunities and threats right um with a p2 focus look at your your case study long term finance is quite um relevant right there has been a change as well Uh, sale and lease back so the accounting standards have changed so you need to understand that budgeting and beyond budgeting framework look at that right because uh, you know this this is a massive company uh, run by who it's run by the directors and non financial people right so there will be a lot of issues related to that there is opportunity for big data there is also um, risks associated uh to this project management is your p2 look at that area there can be opportunities uh there for the examiner to ask you questions both um finance and non finance performance measures you need to look at as well okay so i saw a question coming up how do you develop your business skill right basically ask yourself if i if you're running this business right how will you approach it if this is your business how will you approach it that's it okay because don't come up with very theoretical answers because you know you the answer might be very simplistic right if you're running the business would you do it would you spend x amount x amount of money right nigel says but in crown care we don't have an it department so how can we look into big data very good there is an opportunity for big data okay we have not utilized it but they may it even though there is no section there uh currently you don't know what will come up in the unseen right maybe they have hired a uh hired an it director and there is a, a big project going on about it okay so don't think just because certain things are not there in your un, uh, pre-seen that it will not be asked in your unseen okay because it is part of your syllabus this is the reason why nigel i'm i'm saying that we need to look at our syllabus and see well what are the areas that we need to cover okay so now let us look at vita yeah if i'm looking at vita as i mentioned your anchoring subject is strategic management right and there can be a lot of options available to you right new products new markets growth opportunities 
a lot of things but then you need to also understand the risks faced by the the risks that are faced by the company and because why are we looking at the risk the reason is we need to ensure that we give value to our shareholders who are our principals we are the agents we need to create value to our shareholders right so we need to minimize manage our risks this will include different types of risks yeah so you need to review the risk register evaluate other risks the company may face right you look at the funding issues that we may have with funding you look at the shareholders what sort of a return can we give the shareholders we know the dividend policy is such that we are not giving uh, the dividends to shareholders right that is a clientele uh, effect right that is what our clientele the shareholders want we do not we have attracted a set of shareholders who do not want dividends but we will be looking at increasing share price but if we are going into acquisition or a merger with another company uh, that have different type of shareholders when well there might be some issues that we may have to face always look at uh, in in both case studies ethics corporate governance play a massive role right so that's an important area you cannot leave that now when it comes to ethical issues i'm going to spend a little bit of time here uh, you need to see um, there can be an ethical issue you don't jump and tell the examiner well this is unethical they should not be doing it right you should build up your answer and say the reasons why so is it ethical or unethical is this uh, no first you need to understand identify the facts right identify the facts right because you would have heard a rumor you would have heard something from the press this is you've just heard you need to maybe carry out an independent um independent review you need to request the other party to come over have a discussion then you have to understand is it ethical aspect is it related to legal aspect right you need to understand that then you to say well what ethical ethical principle is breached okay then you will say who is impacted right so you can see there is a structure right there is a structure and then you will say well recommended actions so there is you will go through a certain process to uh identify issues and then report it okay don't jump into conclusions yeah and always uh don't be afraid of discussing the pros and cons of a situation right it could be either way yeah technology is a huge area both for vita as well as crown care it's an enabler but also it will have its own risks that you need to uh, be aware of okay any questions so far any questions all right i i hope you find this quite useful right uh it is i hope you find at this time it is useful for your exam another thing that i want to mention is students ask me how many words should we write now the examiner says 20 words per minute seema has mentioned it's written right 20 words per minute that's the kind of um kind of 
the speed that you need to write as well. So let us say 45 minutes for MCS question. So one third goes into uh, planning. So one third is planning. Then how much more minutes have we got? We've got 30 minutes multiplied by 20 words. We are looking at about 600 words. Okay. So similarly, if we have 60 minutes SCS question, right? One third planning. Then how many minutes have we got left? So you guys need to work out. Tell me how many minutes have we got left? need some interaction 40 minutes so 40 multiplied by 20 words 800 words is what I'm expecting all right so be very uh, very conscious of this you can start writing your answers now check your number of words as well okay all right now this is some of our past students, right? And what they have to say. Now, this lady, she's a professor and you can see the amount of qualifications she's got, right? Um, she came to me in August. She's from Nigeria. Very, very lovely lady. However, with all these qualifications she didn't um, take it easy okay she didn't take it easy saying oh well i've got all this qualification this is it will be very easy for me um so some of the key things that she said right i've, I've noted it down read the precinct not less than five times with proper understanding well um in answering questions, make sure you have an answer plan which covers all the required issues. Use headings for each requirement and subheadings for paragraphs. Examiner is looking for quality rather than quantity important. Always argue both benefits and drawbacks, pros and cons of a situation, right? I thought this was quite interesting. See yourself acting the role as a senior manager, not a student writing the exam. Conclude your answer with recommendations and justify the recommendation because you're at a very senior level. This is for the SCS exams, right? Practice many mocks as possible, right? Uh, so this is what she did. She did mocks, but also did past paper questions, right? Yes, I'm going to send you the recording as well as these, um, these slides, right? Then Michael, again, he's got a number of qualifications from Nigeria, right? This is how he studied, right? Um, he studied quite deeply and spent a lot of time right let us look at his answer uh, the writing approach right identify the number of tasks so answer plan this is important each elaborate each point in a separate paragraph so you can see the way they approached okay and this is a timetable he did for his um, his studies. It's a bit too late for you guys now, but I'm focusing with you guys the answers, right? And this is another professor from Nigeria. Again, number of uh, academic qualifications and professional qualifications, right? Um, so. Again, he's saying be able to identify all the requirements for each section of the exam. Be an effective planner, right? You need to have your technical skill, business skill, people and leadership skills. And you're looking at do your plan, right? That's important, right? It is important to do an answer plan. So with that, 
we've concluded our session and I want to find out whether you, you thought this was a useful session for you guys. Was it helpful? All right, good. So um, these are my contact details, right? Please get in touch with me via LinkedIn, email, WhatsApp me. Um, you can, Nigel, you can ask me any question right now or you can WhatsApp me as well um, anytime. Uh, I'm very uh, I'm there to help you guys. So, uh, Nigel, any other question before we wrap up? So, any other questions from you guys? Right. Are we supposed to have an introduction and a conclusion to our tasks? Nigel, are you in MCS or SCS level? If you can, MCS, right. So, it'll be good to have an intro, but um, intro and a conclusion, right? Um, it is good because it will, however, as Michael mentioned you see what michael mentioned the way he was doing his answer plans was quite um the way he was attacking this answer was very interesting he said identify the number of tasks per question then you have your key points elaborate each point in a separate paragraph right then the last minute or two you know the last few minutes you add two to three lines for your introduction and then concluding sentences, you will add a few more lines. Because, you see, when you go in straight into the introduction, you might waste time writing a lot. You might, without you knowing, you have spent 10 minutes, right? So this is why he quickly goes in, writes the tasks, then puts down the points, then start elaborating. Only right at the end, he does this. Hope that answered your question. Um, so, Osman has asked, are we expected to calculate ratios in advance? I would ask you to calculate the ratios because the because your financials given is very, very simple financials that's given, right? So you would calculate the ratios in advance. And when you're writing, this will help you because then you can talk about liquidity of Vita, right? Uh, well, it is so much and you think there is a problem when it comes to liquidity, right? Because you calculated the ratios and you can justify it as well. Um, so always remember the role we are playing senior finance manager and not a student. Yeah, that is important, right? You have to remember that you are this person who reports to the board, right? And this, this company is not a small company. It's operating in 40 countries, right? What do you put in the introduction specially, right? Kevin, it depends, right? It depends what you, because it depends on the context of the question. So Nana, I, the same thing goes to you, introduction, conclusion, it depends on the context of the question. But as mentioned, if, you know, if the examiner, if, if you get an question saying, you know, um, a, the company is going through a very bad time, in your introduction as well, you need to feel it, right? You need to feel it. You need to see. You need to say, "I'm so sorry to hear about this issue that's happening. I'm very distressed." Similarly, if there's something good happening, also show that. If you have forgotten technical info in the exam, for example, let's say you have forgotten an accounting standard, 
right kelvin you've forgotten an accounting standard well what are you going to do you remember that this is this is what the accounting standard says so you know you don't have to specifically state accounting standard such and such such and such you can just mention uh, as per the accounting standard this is what is required okay so that will that will uh, give you some marks because you're referring to an accounting standard any other questions any other questions from you guys all right then so as mentioned please don't forget um, to contact me these are my contact details right and I hope to see you guys uh, in the near future all right either as MCS students or as CIMA members right um, good luck I wish you all the very best for the exam and I'm sure you will do well we still have some time so I'm sure uh, you will do some some um, questions and answers as well all right you have a good day bye bye then